Uh, shalom to all the viewers and uh, all praises to the Most High. Peace and blessings to the 12 tribes of Israel that are scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. Today, what we're going to be going over is how to understand the secrets in the Bible. How to understand the doctrines that are in the Bible. If you want to understand the Bible from a historical perspective, and you want to understand chronology, then you must read the Bible from back to front, from Genesis all the way to Revelations, in, un in order to understand the historical uh, perspective, the events that happened and the uh, chronological order of things that happened and the different kingdoms and things of that nature. But if you want to understand the doctrines and mysteries and the secrets that are hidden in the Bible, then there is a specific way that you have to read the Bible. God tells you in the Bible, he gives you the clues. He lays it all out on the prerequisites that are needed in order, in, uh, in order to understand the mysteries that are hidden in the Bible. So that's what we're going to touch on today in order to give you a clear understanding on how the Bible is actually unlocked. I'm Brother Yerashua. This is the Bible Unlocked. Understanding the secrets. Psalms 111 verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. This is the first uh, thing on the list. This is the first prerequisite that must be met in order to understand doctrine in the Bible. It says a good understanding, meaning a good understanding of the Bible have all they that do his commandments. If somebody is telling you that the laws are done away with and you don't have to keep none of God's commandments, all you have to do is believe, he doesn't have a, he or she does not have a good understanding. God has blocked that understanding from them. If somebody is uh, going to church and not worshiping on the Sabbath day and instead using uh, going to church on, the, on Sunday, they don't have a good understanding of doctrine in the Bible. The Most High has blocked that understanding from them. Uh, and this is the first thing on the list. You must be keeping God's commandments to the best of your ability in order for him to open up those spiritual eyes and ears to start unlocking the Bible mysteries. Amos chapter three, verse seven. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. Now we know that that God has a specific set of uh, people that he would reveal these secrets to, and it's his prophets. So these are the ones who are gonna be able to unlock the Bible uh, secrets and mysteries. It's the prophets that are, do, that, are, that are able to do that. Now we need to find out who exactly these prophets are. Do they come from all people or are there specific people that he's gonna give the breakdowns to the Bible to? Ezekiel 38 verse 17. Thus saith the Lord God, art thou he of whom I have spoken in old times by my servants, the prophets of Israel? The prophets come from the nation of Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel. That's where the prophets come from. God's prophets come from that nation of people, not anyone else. So what is this telling you? That in order to understand the secrets, you have to be one of the prophets from the nation of Israel. A Gentile cannot teach an Israelite the secrets and mysteries of the Bible. According to the Bible, God's not given all people the secrets and the mysteries. A Gentile cannot teach the Israelites about the um, about any of the the deep doctrines that's going on in the Bible. What is the Bible referring to when you uh, study it? It's dealing with an oppressed people, uh, um, uh, uh, impoverished people, uh, 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 destroyed people. Uh, the Gentiles that are teaching the Bible today, they cannot relate to that and they cannot possibly break down the Bible in its true essence because they cannot relate to the, um, the, the narration that's going on in the Bible. It would be no different if the Bible was discussing or if it, was, uh, if it dealt around the topic of a rich nation of people that flourished and that had their own businesses and always prospered. The Israelites today, we wouldn't be able to teach that because we, don't, we can't relate to that. We cannot relate to that, to that doctrine. So the Israelites are the only ones who can 
understand the Bible the way it's broken down because first of all, it's written about the Israelites and it's written by the Israelites. So they would only make sense that the Israelites would be the one to break it down and that God would give them the secrets. This is, this, this is common sense. It's nothing personal, it's just common sense. That's just the way it goes. Now we understand two key components in understanding the, the mysteries of the Bible. One, it needs to be somebody that's keeping God's commandments. That's the first thing on the list. Second, it needs to be a prophet from the nation of Israel. That's who God is gonna reveal the mysteries to, one of the, the, the deep secrets to. Now we're gonna go into exactly how you piece the Bible together, how exactly you're supposed to read the Bible in, in order to understand and unlock these secrets. Isaiah 28 verse nine, whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. So you have to be weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. What does that mean? What is the milk? The milk is the basics in the Bible. So first you have to learn the basics of the Bible. The basics of the Bible is referring to the law, statutes, and commandments written in the beginning of the book. And you have to understand the, the high holy days. You have to understand the basic functions on the way the Bible works. That's the milk. It's just like, it's the same thing like, like a baby that comes out. The baby has to be weaned from the milk first before it graduates to adult food. So it's the same thing with the Bible. You have to be weaned from the basics before you get, be able to take a bite of the, the meat, the deep mysteries, the doctrines. That's what this is saying here. So we know that you need to be uh, an Israelite prophet and you need to be keeping God's commandments and you need to be weaned from the milk. These are the ones who you're gonna get your, your, um, your doctrines from, a correct doctrines from, you know, in the Bible. For precept must be upon precept. The Bible says precept must be upon precept. Not that it should be upon precept, not that, you know, if you want it to be upon precept, it must be upon precept. Now, what is a precept? It's a command. You're gonna find the commands in the first uh, five books and in the prophets you'll find commands there so it's, it's talking about the commandments here's an example of what it what what it's meant by precept upon precept Leviticus 7 verse 27 whatsoever soul it be that eateth any manner of blood even that soul shall be cut off from his people so here's the command it says whoever whatsoever man eats blood, that soul shall be cut off from his people. So that's a command. Now we need to go command upon command or precept upon precept in order to get more understanding on this command because this is this is a pretty vague uh, command. We need to understand who the whatsoever is that it's referring to in this commandment. So now we're gonna go precept upon another precept to get the correct breakdown on what the whole commandment is referring to. Watch, Leviticus 17, verse 12. Therefore I said unto you, the children of Israel, no soul of you shall eat blood, neither shall any stranger that sojourneth among you eat blood. Now we get the understanding on the whatsoever man that it was referring to. Now the whatsoever man it was referring to is referring to the children of Israel and the strangers that lived among us. We're not able to eat the blood. So it, that a law applied only to the children of Israel and those that were dwelling amongst us. So the whatsoever that it was, the whatsoever man is, it was referring to uh, in the first verse, that, does, that was not applying to anybody else outside of those, uh, outside of the nation of Israel and the strangers or the Gentiles that were living amongst us. So this is precept upon precept, getting an understanding on what the commandment was actually speaking about. Let's get a little bit more on this commandment and we're gonna piece the whole thing together. Deuteronomy 12 and verse 16. Only ye shall not eat the blood, ye shall pour it upon the earth as water. So this is the complete understanding now of that commandment. That's the precept upon precept. So now we know the whatsoever man 
that it says shall not eat. It was referring to the whatsoever man of Israel and the whatsoever man of the strangers that were living amongst Israel. And now you know how to dispose of the blood. You need to dispose of it and pour it out on the ground like water. So this is precept upon precept. You got to remember, you cannot take one verse and run a thousand miles with it. There's verses that connect verses together in order to understand the Bible. The Most High may, has it designed to where you have to work in order to understand his word. It's just not going to be laid out all out on the floor for you to be uh, picked up like, like it's nothing. You have to work and actually study to be able to piece everything together. So this is precept upon precept, understanding it in the full context, the way that it was written and meant to be understood. Psalms 119 verse 100. I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. King David says he understands more than all the people that came before him, all the ancients, because he does something as simple as keep God's precept. He doesn't do precept upon what he thinks or precept upon somebody's philosophy or precept upon uh, 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 somebody else's doctrine. He stays within the precepts of God. And he said, because of that, I have more understanding than people that came before me. I have more understanding than people that, don't li that live longer than me. This is the same thing today. Somebody who can come, somebody who would come into this knowledge for six, say six months, after six months of learning precept upon precept, they will have more understanding than somebody that has been in a Christian church for 30 years. I guarantee it without a shadow of a doubt. I guarantee it. Because the, the churches, they don't do precept upon precept. They do precept upon somebody's emotions or precept upon somebody's uh, uh, a book that came out in order to try to understand God and push the doctrine on people. But that's not how the Bible works. You're not going to understand any mysteries or any secrets doing it that way, doing precept upon what the, um, the, um, the, 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 the Catholic priest or, or whoever says. You're not going to get any understanding of doing it that way. You must stay in the precepts of the Bible like King David did. Line upon line, line upon line. What is line upon line? Line upon line is keeping it in the context. This is the biggest problem that most people have. It's context. You understand how you're gonna understand how important context is. Keeping it in the context is an extremely important thing that people must do in order to understand correct doctrine. Here a little and there a little. What does here a little and there a little mean? That means here a little from this chapter or here a little from this verse and there a little from that chapter and there a little from that verse. You piece it all together. Here's an example of here a little and there a little. It's going to be very clear by the time you finish looking at this example. Ephesians 1 verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. So Paul is writing a letter to the saints that are at Ephesus. So now I need to understand who are the saints? This is where it goes here a little and there a little. So I would take this verse and I would say, okay, he said to the saints. So I need to understand what does the Bible say who the saints are? I don't want to go off of my own opinion. I want to see what the Bible says the saints are. This is, he, this is who the saints are according to the Bible. Psalms 148 verse 14. He also exalted the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel, a people near unto him. Praise ye the Lord. So now we know who the saints are. The saints are the children of Israel. The word even means indeed. It's an old English word. So it's saying the saints, indeed the children of Israel. That's who the saints are in the Bible. So now you know in the New Testament, when you see the word saints, you go right back to this word, I mean to this verse, and then you connect it together and you say, okay, I know who the saints are now. Because you have to remember, when Paul is writing this letter, he's already assuming that people know who this, he's already assuming that you know the old, the scriptures from before, or else you wouldn't be reading his letters. 
He's assuming that you know who the saints are already. So there's no need for him to say the saints who are Israelites. He doesn't need to say that. He's assuming you, you've been reading before. But this is the problem. People get confused when they jump in the middle of the book. People open up the book and start right at the, this, what you call the New Testament. And they haven't read anything prior. So everything, they're starting in the middle of the book and they have no clue what's going on. They have no clue at all. So this is here a little and there a little. You gotta piece it together that way. The New Testament is a reflection of the Old Testament. You have to understand the Old Testament in order to understand the New Testament. You need to go here a little and you need to go there a little. Isaiah 29 and verse 10. For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep and hath closed your eyes, the prophets and your rulers, the seers have he covered. God has a spirit of deep sleep on all people out there. He has a spirit of deep sleep on rulers, deep uh, sleep on pastors. He has a deep sleep on all people out there. And that's why, because he doesn't, and the reason he has that on people is because he doesn't want all people to be able to understand this word. Remember, we already said that there's prerequisites. Once people start seeking and start trying to uh, go back and find out the true God, then he'll start taking off that deep sleep. Then he'll start removing the deep sleep from you. And, and this is everybody. I mean, this is not just the viewers that are watching right now. Everybody had that deep sleep on before, including myself. I had that deep sleep. I remember trying to read the Bible years back. And this thing looked like, I'm telling you, it looked like I was trying to read a German or something like that, or Russian, some type of Russian language. I'm like, I don't know what this thing is. I'm trying to read the book of Matthew and one of Christ's parables. I'm like, I have no clue what this thing is saying. No clue. And then I'm reading things in the Bible. I know it says this in the Bible. Then I go to church on Sunday. I was going to church on Sunday. And you go ask the pastor the question, and he tell you something totally different than what's in the Bible. And I said, I know this ain't right. Something's not right about this. Something is not right about this. That was the deep sleep poured out. Everybody has this spirit of the deep sleep. But when you start getting your mind and shaking off the religion, you shake it all off, then that's when the spirit starts getting removed off of you. You start taking that deep sleep spirit off of you. And the vision of all has become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed, which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I cannot, for it is sealed. It is, they say it is sealed. That's what happens. Who's the ones that learn? The ones that so-called go to their uh, theologian schools and the seminary schools. Those are the ones who you would call learned in the Bible. And you say, okay, now open up the page, the revelations, and tell them to break down one of those, um, one of those uh, uh, chapters in the book of Revelations. And they're going to say, oh, go to your pastor and ask them that. Find a preacher and ask them that. Tell them to break this down. Revelations 18, Revelations 17, Revelations 19. He's going to say, brother, that's sealed. Nobody understands that. That's why the churches don't go into the book of Revelations. You hardly see anyone going into that. And then when they do go into it, they destroy it and mar it and tear it up. Go off into something totally different. It's sealed. To them, they're saying, look, this thing is sealed up. All you have to do is believe. Don't worry about that. Just worry about the Gospels. Don't worry about the book of Revelations or don't worry about this breakdown or don't worry about this prophecy. That's what, that's what this is saying. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned saying, read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I am not learned. This is the person who didn't go to any, didn't get any formal edu uh, education uh, in regards to the Bible. And you say, look, read this. And he say, man, I can't read that. I, I, I haven't went and got studied up on that. The whole thing is sealed. The whole, the deep sleep is on everyone, whether you don't went to a, 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 um, a theologian school or whether you just a, a regular person out there who hasn't had any formal education on this subject. Everyone has the deep sleep on them. If you believe the Bible, according to the Bible. Wherefore, the Lord say it, for as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. See, they're not going precept upon 
precept in the Bible. This is how God put that deep sleep on people. You want to, people who, people are accustomed and people like the precepts of men versus the precepts of God. So, okay, God says, if you want to do the precepts of men, this is how the deep sleep is going to get up, going to get upon you. You see it all throughout the churches. People have, people get taught the precepts of men. And that's how God poured out that spirit upon you. He didn't do no sprinkle magic and, 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 and blow some dust down and everybody's hypnotized. No, he used the people with the precept of men teaching you a lie over and over and traditions of men. And that's how you have become hypnotized and became, uh, and became inhabited by that spirit of deep sleep. And this, everyone is, uh, is um, this has happened to everyone. So it's not anything to feel ashamed about, but you gotta snap out of it. And you stop doing the precepts of men and start doing the precepts of God. Isaiah 29 and verse 18. And in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book. It says, in that day the deaf shall hear the words of the book. It ain't talking about somebody who's, who lost their hearing. It's, it's referring to the spiritual deaf. Remember, the Lord poured, poured out a spirit of deep sleep on people. So the eyes and the ears are in a, a, a state of, um, uh, of deafness and a state of blindness. So God says in that day, there's gonna be people that were deaf, meaning spiritually deaf, they're gonna be able to understand the, uh, the, um, the words that are coming out of the book. They're gonna be able to hear it and be able to process it and understand what it's saying. Because even though you can read the, um, the precepts in the Bible to people, it still go through one ear and out the other. They just can't comprehend it because the stronghold of religion and traditions is what got a lock on their mind. And the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. And the people's eyes, meaning their spiritual eyes, are going to be open. They're gonna be enlightened. They're gonna be enlightened to be able to see, oh, this is what it was talking about. Or this is what it was saying. Now I understand. That's starting to happen, that's happening now with the, the Most High waking up the elect of Israel but then eventually it's going to happen to a lot more people. A lot of people are going to be able to understand, okay, we've been lied to. You know, this, those things that we've been taught before were not correct. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 9. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. Even though the Israelites are the ones that's given the, the, the secrets of God and he's given all of his uh, mysteries to the Israelites, we still don't know everything 100%. We don't know everything 100%. He has not revealed everything to anyone yet. No one has got that uh, spiritual revelation to understand the whole thing in the Bible, all the breakdowns in the Bible. There's a bunch of breakdowns in the Bible that people will just not, will not understand at this moment. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. But it says when that which is perfect is come, who is that referring to? Christ, Yahushai. He's the one that's perfect. It says when he's come, then the things that are done in part are gonna be done away. Why? Because he's going to teach us all of the mysteries of the Bible. He's going to break it down. He's the word of God. So he's going to break everything down. So there's no more prophesying in part. We're gonna know in full. So let's recap. Now we know how to break down and unravel the mysteries and the secrets in the Bible. Uh, you first, like we said, you must be keeping the commandments. That's the first thing on the, on the list. You have to be drawn from the milk and weaned from the breast. You gotta be keeping the commandments. That's the first thing in order for the Most High to lift off that spirit of deep sleep and to replace it with a spirit of understanding. That's the first thing. And it needs to be a prophet from the nation of Israel that's gonna break down the secrets. They're the ones who's gonna break down the secrets, the prophets from the nation of Israel, because God says he's the one, those are the people that he gives his secrets to. Everybody else needs to sit back and learn. Not uh, try to take the rightful spot of the Israelites and try to teach, because we see what happens when that happens. Uh, Christianity is a perfect example of that. When you let the Gentiles start teaching, then the whole doctrine gets perverted and everyone's confused. 
and you need to stay within the precepts of the Bible. You need to stay here a little and there a little in the Bible. You need to be staying within the Bible. The Bible explains itself. You just need to be able to put the pieces of the puzzle together because it's ultimately a huge puzzle that's being put together. And you got people around the world that have different pieces. So God doesn't give a one piece or he doesn't give the whole puzzle to one person. That's not how he works. It's different people that have different puzzles to put together. And it, and, it, and it all comes together and forms one body, one complete body, one complete puzzle. Hopefully you've got a clear understanding on how this works. Ecclesiastes 12 and verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. If you didn't understand how to unlock the secrets in the Bible, if you didn't understand that, maybe you didn't comprehend it, maybe the Most High didn't give you that understanding yet. If you didn't understand that, what you need to understand is you have to keep God's commandments. You have to keep God's commandments. Maybe you might not want to understand the secrets of the Bible, but there's no way of getting out of keeping God's commandments. This is the whole duty of man. That's what you're put on earth for, is to keep God's commandments. Let's find out what one of God's commandments are that we're going to learn this week. Leviticus chapter 15, verse 16. And if any man's seed of copulation go out from him, then he shall wash all his flesh in water and be unclean until the even. What is man's seed of copulation? That's referring to a man's uh, sperm or the ejaculation. That's what that's referring to. So when a man's sperm comes out after he slept with his woman or his wife, then afterwards he needs to wash himself with water. You need to get up and take a shower. That's what this is saying. And every garment and every skin whereon is the seed of copulation shall be washed with water and be unclean until the even. And everything that the sperm falls on, like the bed sheets or anything like that, that needs to be taken up and it needs to be washed in the washing machine, whatever you have, or you hand wash it, or whatever you, whatever method you have to wash clothing. That's what needs to be done at that point. The woman also with whom man shall lie with seed of copulation, they shall both bathe themselves in water and be unclean until the even. And the woman who the man lays with she needs to take a shower as well. Both male and female both need to get up and take a shower when the seed of copulation has come out and has touched anyone. So that is the law that must be kept within the nation of Israel. That is a practice that God says he wants his people to take part partake in. So with that, we're going to conclude and I hope that you have got an understanding on this lesson and that you have been edified and until next time, I'm Brother Yerushalayim, and I say, Shalom.